Right, so uh, in this video, I'm going to explain uh, one of the assignments that we have for the course, which is the major project. And as you can see on your screen now, uh, this is the home page of my MOOC. So I do have several MOOC uh, courses, but the one that is of concern now is this one, which is the, the principles of assessments and evaluation. I was about to mention the name of my course incorrectly. Wow. All right. So, um, just want to show you uh, the course assessment button here on the toolbar on your left. And if you click that particular bar uh, icon, whatever you want to call it, uh, it will lead us to this page where um, the page basically details all the assessments that we have for this particular course. It's going to take a while for this to, well, display all the things nicely. All right. so. Let me just take a while um, to show you the structure of the assessments or the assessment tasks that we have for this course this semester. As you are aware already, there are several changes uh, in light of the threat of pandemic um, COVID-19. So initially we have um, for this course two tests. However, for this semester, there will be only one test and this test uh, constitutes 20% of the overall assessment scores. In addition to the test, we also have three assignments. Uh, assignment one, major project. Assignment two, rubric review. So these two assignments are the same with the same percentage of scores. However, for the third assignment, Basically, this is um, a replacement of final examination. Hence, uh, the percentage of the scores are similar, 40%. And for assignment three, we are having case study this semester. So I'm going to do a recording for each of these assignments in a separate video. Uh, and the reason why I'm making a video detailing, of, uh, detailing all of these assignments uh, is because uh, it will make it easier for you to refer to uh, anytime when you have questions or doubt, you can watch this video again and again. All right, so without further ado, let's look at the first assignment, which is the major project. So you can read about the test here. I'm just going to go straight to the sections uh, for this particular assignment. I'm going to click and download the assignment sheet. Okay. Bersabar, <laughs> sebab dia memang akan setiap selambat. Alright, so the assignment basically uh, requires you to develop a test uh, as well as carry out another process known as item analysis. So uh, it is okay if most of the things that I'm going to say here about the assignment do not make sense because uh, it will take one whole semester for us to basically learn everything that required by this assignment, the topics and everything. So at this point, where we are halfway uh, in our course, uh, in our learning, uh, some of these may appear very foreign and won't make, make sense, but it's fine. It's early in the morning, uh, I just woke up, so just bear with me, okay? All right, so let's look at the uh, basic descriptions about the assignment. Um, there's also some modifications which I'm doing in light of this assignment. So it is 30%, which means that it's a lot. I have mentioned this in the class. Uh, it is very difficult uh, not to have good scores for this uh, assessment. But I did have one group in the past, uh, several years ago. Uh, who somehow um, failed the course because they did not submit this one assignment. So because it is 30% is a lot, make sure that you submit this assignment. Okay, uh, basically what you have to do, I've changed, uh, I've changed this to individual or pair work. Previously, I have asked that this is a group work assignment with at least, uh, sorry, with the maximum number of four members. But uh, given the landscape 
and the manner in which you approach your studies at the moment, I think having a group work of four people for one assignment could be difficult, particularly when we are not in conventional setting, uh, which you are able to meet with your um, friends and discuss what assignments and divide tasks and everything. Therefore, I've decided to, instead of uh, asking you to construct a one hour test, you only need to come up with a 40 minute test, which I have uh, indicated this here. Okay, so the duration of the test is shorter from one hour to 40 minutes only. And instead of having this particular assignment as a group work, you can attempt this assignment individually or pair work, okay? And my language students, please note that if your test is on listening and or speaking, then the test should be about only 20 minutes and should not be longer. Uh, what I'm saying here, bottom line, is that you are required to construct lesser number of test questions just to make your life easier. Okay, but it's still 30%. It still requires about the same processes that you have to go through when you develop a test, but I've just shortened the amount of time. Okay, so do attempt this uh, particular assignment individually or pair. All right, uh, at any point of um, doing this assignment, you have any issues or anything, do let me know. We can always discuss uh, or come to a uh, an agreeable way of doing things in much more effective and easier and convenience to your life. Okay, so I have basically detailed what I am expecting that you do from this assignment in these instructions. So uh, the rest of the things remain the same. The test that you have to design should be formative, which means that it measures uh, classroom learning um, while the teaching and learning process are still ongoing, please do not come up with a final exam or with a midterm test because these are examples of summative assessments and they are not formative. So a simple 40 minutes classroom test. Okay, and the setting is for secondary school. You can pick from Form 1 until Form 5, up to you but please avoid getting into Form 6, okay? Just from Form 1 until Form 5, just pick one form. And after you have decided on which form that you want to aim your test for, so let's say that we are, we have decided on Form 1, for example, and please download the DSKP or the Document Standard Curriculum dan Pentaksiran for Form 1 in the respective subject that your, your test is intended to be developed. So if you are a mathematics student, so you will be looking at the SKP for mathematics. If you are an English uh, TASL student, so you will, you will be looking at... <laughs> Doing a recording is tiring, guys. Okay, so if you are a TASL student, hence, uh, then look at the SKP for uh, English. All right, so since I am on the subject, uh, let me just uh, get down to the options that you have with regard to the areas that you can assess. Okay, so for TESOL students, remember that TESOL, not TESOL, sorry, remember that language learning consists of six components. We have reading, writing, listening, speaking, grammar, and literature. And... Um, because these components are distinctive in nature, hence we must look at uh, testing the skills for language separately. Uh, hence, you cannot have one test that measures all these six components. It will not be effective. Uh, within 40 minutes, you will not be able to assess a lot, but it still provides you um, with sufficient amount of time to look at one specific skill or the most two combined skills okay however even if there are combined skills that you are looking at it should be under separate sections 
in your test paper. We can't have like one item measuring two components. It will be difficult for us to determine learning that students have achieved if we were to do it that way. If you have any questions, if you are confused, or you might want to have clarifications about what I just said, feel free to ask questions, okay? Right, so for TESOL students, uh, you can pick one of these six components, or the most that you can go for is two. Because within 40 minutes, you cannot ask a lot. You won't even have sufficient time to ask a lot of questions in your test. So when you are deciding, for example, that you want to have two components, then be strategic in deciding which two components can I look at at the same time. Maybe reading and writing, or maybe writing and literature, maybe grammar and writing, uh, or maybe literature and reading, for example. But I think if you want to do literature, it is always best to do a literature, uh, to look at literature component with writing, okay? However, if your focus is on listening and or speaking, it is always better to look at them, to look at each of these skills separately. Either you do a listening test or you do a speaking test. Okay, but if you plan to look at listening or speaking, do consult me because the way uh, the task is developed, the questions are developed, the stimuli that you will present to your students will be slightly different than the normal written test. Okay, right. So let's move on to other disciplines. Uh, my mathematics students, you do have two options. If you want to do a test, you can either do tests for mathematics or science subject. And if you want to look at science subject, then you can go for general science or specific disciplines within science studies, such as looking at physics, chemistry, or biology. So that's for my mathematics students. As for my physical and health education students, you have two main components in your subject, which are physical education and health education. So do a test that looks at only one of these. Don't combine them, all right? And I think it will be interesting to do a test for health education rather than physical education, but it's fine. The, de the decision is up to you. See, I'm about to eat my words, okay. So art students, uh, I think it's very straightforward. You don't have any other options. Do not do tests on Bahasa Melayu because your area is arts. So since I've mentioned Bahasa Melayu, okay, uh, except for my TESOL students, the other students in my class from other programs, these include my mathematics students, my physical and health education students, and my art students. The whole report should be in English. So when you submit this particular report for this assignment, the report itself must be in English. However, the questions for your tests are in Bahasa Melayu. I know that this will be a challenge to my mathematics students, but I do want to maintain the element of real life relevance of this assignment with the context of our education in school when you become teachers later and you have to develop your test questions your test questions will be in in, in Bahasa Melayu all right so moving on your test should at least have 10 multiple choice items and five subjective type items. So remember that with 10 MCQs and five subjective items, these are not enough to be covered within 40 minutes. You need to have more questions uh, for a 40 minute test, but within these questions that you have, uh, some of these questions must be represented by 10 multiple choice format items and five subjective items. You, need, you will need more items to fulfill the 40 minutes duration, okay? And um, 
when you do your subjective item, do not ask essay questions. Just take to either short answer or structured. And the best way is to have the combinations of both item types. Because essay questions is uh, time consuming to answer. And within 40 minutes test, if you ask essay questions, then you will not be uh, given more time to ask any other questions. So it will be such a waste. You can keep your essay questions for midterm exam, for example, but for a classroom test with, with such short amount of time, then for subjective items, stick to short answer and structured. Okay, so I have made a video uh, like a couple of weeks ago uh, explaining the different item types that we have. So if you are not so sure what is short answer and what is structured, please go and watch that video. Okay, moving on. You must also include at least two stimuli in your test. So if you are wondering what in the world is stimuli, don't worry, we will do, uh, we will have one session where we'll be talking at and, and looking at stimuli in item construction. So this will make more sense after we have covered that particular lesson. So when teachers prepare their tests, they do have to prepare three documents. The first one being table of specification. We will have an online lesson just for this topic. And then um, <clears throat> prepare the test paper as well as the answer scheme. So I will be uh, coming up with a video uh, for this lesson that looks at development of an answer scheme. So these are basically um, the content of your report, the suggested structure in which you can basically present um, your assignment. So we are going to look at each and every one of these in detail. So I'm <clears throat> sorry guys, still coughing. Now and then. All right. Uh, these are just uh, topics or basically what you should focus on. But the explanation for this is presented here. So 1.0 is the introduction. Um, please be mindful that um, I don't require a lot of mongoring in this assignment. It's very straightforward, uh, straight to the point kind of assessment and just the presentations of evidence. All right. So for your introduction, the most that you can go are like two paragraphs. So please tell me or prov provide the uh, background information about your test, which includes information such as number one, what is the subject that you are looking at? Is it English? If it's English, what component is the test measuring? If it's um, uh, physical and health education, then are you looking at physical education questions or health education questions? Okay, so please specify that. Tell me what form that this uh, test intended to measure, uh, as well as please list down uh, the topics and the subtopics which this test looks at. Okay, I did specify uh, in the instructions that you have to, let me just find the particular sentence that states that, that there are learning outcomes which I've stated here. Okay, number three. In your introduction, within these two paragraphs, so the first paragraph talks about the background information about your test, just uh, based on what I've mentioned just now. And then for your second paragraph, please state the learning outcomes that your assessment is measuring. Okay, so learning outcomes are stated explicitly in the document standard curriculum dan pentaksiran. It just requires you to copy and paste into your report. But when you do your test, the questions that you have for the test must assess students' achievement of these learning outcomes. We will talk more about this in our online lesson, uh, because if I were to explain uh, in, a, in more detail, it could be more confusing. So I'm just going to stop here for learning outcome. 
uh, remember that learning outcomes are what teachers plan or teachers frame their lesson in their lesson plan. So when we do assessment, we measure back students' uh, attainment of this learning outcome. So what I need for the assignment is you to state back in the second paragraph of introduction the list of learning outcomes that your test aims to measure. Okay, so basically that wraps up introduction. These two paragraphs don't go more than that because I just need, I just need succinct information. Okay, moving on to test planning. So just type in your report 2.0 test planning. Have a bit of introduction, uh, like one paragraph mentioning that this section focuses on the process of planning for the test, blah, 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 blah. Just one short paragraph. All right. So after that particular introductory paragraph for 2.0 test planning, on the next page, just give me a copy of your table of specification. Okay, we will uh, learn a uh, table of specification in um, maybe next week. So just attach um, on the second page of task planning, a copy of your table of specifications. I'm going to call it TOS. So that's it. That's your 2.0. We are done because your TOS is the evidence of your task planning. Moving on to 3.0. Okay, so have a very short paragraph as well. Uh, just like an introductory paragraph in this subsection, we look at item construction process, uh, blah, 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 and that's it. So on the next page, please attach a copy of your test. All right. So I want a copy of the test, the exact test paper that you give out to your respondent. I don't want uh, the cover page being taken out. I want the exact copy with cover page, with instructions, with questions, without any modification. So literally, you just have to take your test questions, put it under 3.0, okay? And then a copy of your answer scheme, the exact answer scheme as well, with the cover page and everything. Uh, so with that, you are done and dusted with one and two. That's it. I just need these documents and then I'll be assessing the quality of your test items from these documents. All right, so for number three here, item arrangement and levels on Bloom's taxonomy, just uh, present me with the exact copy of this table. So I'm going to enlarge uh, this a little bit so that we can see better, both you and me. So we have four columns, number, item and answer, score, as well as levels on Bloom's taxonomy. What you have to do is copy back all your items and paste the items here. Okay, so let's start from the very beginning. So number starts with your first question, first section. So please indicate here, section A, one or Q1 for question one, anyhow you want it to be, as long as I understand. Okay, so see for example, your question one for section A is a multiple choice question. So copy back the whole question, multiple choice and put them here. If the question has pictures, for example, uh, then the picture is considered as part of the item. So please copy back and paste the picture here as well. All right, so it's very important to present to me the whole items. If the items are based on a passage, so you don't have to copy the whole passage, it's okay. I will refer to the passage uh, here on my own, so don't worry. Unless if it's multiple choice questions or you are looking at skills such as uh, identifications of main points where you have a short passage, then put the uh, stimuli here. So the whole item followed by the answer. It's okay if it's long. It's fine. It will be long. All right. So for this particular section, the third one, it will consume pages and pages. It's fine. It does provide me with vital information and I need this information in your report. So please indicate the score for each of those items. 
So if you have, for example, 30 items in your chart, so you have 30 here from 1 until 30 and all the 30 questions uh, sequentially copied and pasted here. Okay. And uh, what's important is that for each of these items, please indicate the levels on Bloom's taxonomy. Okay, so this table is super, super important for two main reasons. Uh, it provides me information in light of number one, whether you have correctly targeted the level on Bloom's taxonomy for each of the questions. So this table allows me to see, see for example, you say that this item is evaluation. Okay, you say for this item is evaluation. So it allows me to compare whether is it really an evaluation question or could it just be an understanding questions? All right, so it, it provides me the accuracy of the cognitive processes which your items target. And number two, it also shows me whether you have effectively arranged your items according to the cognitive processes. So we will learn about um, item arrangement later, but yes, this table is super important. If it consumes up to 10 pages of your assignment, it's fine. It does feel repetitive, it's fine, okay? Right, so for number four, uh, for number four, well, it rhymes, okay. Uh, if you are not mathematics students, so just ignore this. This number four is only for my science and mathematics students, but I will explain this in class when I am with my mathematics students later because um, it is not relevant for the other programs. Okay. So for 4.0 uh, is uh, for test administration. So basically, given the nature of the life that we have at the moment, uh, you are not allowed to go out and get people to answer to your questions. Uh, this will be the conventional setting of this assignment. Now, uh, all of us are trapped inside our respective residence. Uh, with social distancing and the best manner to communicate with other people is through internet, for example. So your test will have to be an online test. You still need people to respond to your test. So you might need to use um, platforms such as SurveyMonkey to construct your online test. So do get people to respond to your test. We need responses. Uh, because they are crucial for us to carry out the remaining sections of this assignment, which, which we will go uh, in detail for each of these later. Okay, so in test administration, you just uh, narrate to me or describe to me the process of test administration that you have undergone in collecting responses for your test. All right, guys, so just be uh, transparent. This does not require a lot of flamboyance or goreng goreng. If you have used SurveyMonkey, for example, and you administered the test uh, via phone, then explain to me that, okay? Basically, just inform me how did you go about carrying out your process of test administration? Right, so we will cover test administrations in our lesson as well, so don't worry. And moving on to the bits which my mathematics students will excel and my TESOL students will be scared. <laughs> These are the calculation parts. So beginning from test score interpretations up to item analysis. Right, don't be disheartened. These are simple calculations, even my standard four girl can do it, okay? Right, so basically after you have administered your test for this process here, now we have a set of data with us. So data on its own does not mean anything. We have to make this data meaningful uh, through a process of analysis. So these are basically aspects which pertain to uh, analysis of data. 
don't worry, we will be looking at this intensively in our online lessons. In fact, we have five exercises to do in light of this topic, just to make sure that you are good at it. So we'll get there when we get there. But basically, uh, the, the fifth part of the report is test score in interpretations. See, I was just about to pronounce the word incorrectly. So we, sh we will be looking at frequency distributions and measures of central tendency. They do sound like very complicated, but these are the things that you have learned when you were in secondary school. Okay, uh, concepts like mode, median and mean, you have learned this. Frequency of distribution, guys, you have learned this. So this will be just like refreshing back your memories, I hope. <laughs> okay. So after that, we are going to look at item analysis. So there are two um, skills under item analysis that you have to carry out here. Uh, the first one is item difficulty and the second one is item discrimination. Okay, so the reason why I ask you to find people to respond to your tasks is because we need the responses for us to measure the effectiveness of our items. So items can be measured in terms of how effective or how ineffective they are uh, through a process known as item difficulty and item discrimination. Uh, I will talk more on this when we get into our, when we get into our online lessons looking at these two aspects of item analysis. Okay? So how many people should respond to your test? Uh, ideally, 15,000 people would be lovely, but if getting 15,000 people is ridiculously uh, unachievable, um, 30 respondents is the best number of respondents for your test. But if 30 is too much, please have at least 15 people responding to your test. Because if it's lesser than that, then it makes the process of calculating item difficulty and item discriminations repetitive and tiring. Uh, you'll get what I mean later when we get to these particular exercises and whatnot. Okay, so at least 15, one five, but if you can get more than that, 20, 25, 30, then uh, your analysis is more accurate. All right. So who are the people who should respond to your test? Annie, Tom, Dick and Harry. It doesn't matter. Your dad, your mom, your sister, as long as they understand the items and they have acquired the skills. Okay? So it can be your cousins, it can be your classmates. So you might be uh, required to respond to all your classmates' tests just to get responses for this. Uh, so you help them and they help you out with their, with your test as well. So anyone, uh, your neighbor, your Machit Canteen, so we don't have Machit Canteen anymore, so nobody is going to school. Uh, basically, anyone is okay. They don't have to be from the same group. They can be wide ranging from various backgrounds. So when you mention or when you provide uh, the narrative for your test administration, you will also be telling me who are the people who responded to your test. Okay. Right. So I'm just going to keep going. This is the manner in which you will be presenting this table, uh, your test data. Uh, don't worry, we will learn about this. Uh, in our exercises, so this will make more sense later. And we will also be learning item difficulty and item discriminations and how can you come up with this table for your report, okay? Uh, and after we have carried out the calculations for these uh, indices, then uh, here's the part which is crucial, your interpretation of what the indices mean. So all this, will be covered in our exercises, guys, so don't worry. Right, so reflections, basically uh, just like two paragraphs uh, about what learning have you experienced or obtained uh, in the course of completing this assignment. And finally, conclusion. So if you have cited or referred to any particular bibliography, books and whatnot, 
do list down your references here. So I would appreciate if you could uh, write your references based on APA format. And finally, the list of appendices, uh, which you will be providing me with um, four different documents. So in Appendix 1, please attach a copy of the test. In Appendix 2, a copy of your test. In Appendix 3, your answer scheme. And Appendix 4, very, very important. These are the answer scripts of all respondents who have responded to your test. So if you have, like I said, 15,000 people who have responded and answered your test questions, so do provide me with 15,000 copies of answer scripts. Okay, uh, because I need to look at the authenticity of your test responses. I don't want you to be responding to your own questions 15,000 times. Okay, guys. Right, so if you have conducted your test online, so it is much easier because just give me a soft copy of all these answer scripts. So the best way to submit your assignment is by sharing with me the link to your Google Drive where maybe you'll have uh, this report specific topics or aspects in this, of this report uh, in a number of folders, for example. And this is the date of submission. Uh, of course, this is subjected to changes, but as of now, we need to have a goal and specific directions or timeline, hence I'm putting July 15 as our last day of submission. Okay, so that basically it. Um, it is a long explanation video. I'm sorry for taking so much of your time. I hope that this video is helpful in helping you or assisting you with the process of completing this assignment. So should you have any questions, if you have even the slightest issues and concerns, please let me know. And please type down your questions underneath this video, primarily because I have 120 students under me this semester, and these concerns could be shared concerns. Uh, your problems could also be the same problems of other students. So by typing down the questions underneath this video, when I answer your questions, it also benefit those who read my answer. Okay, so I wish you all the best with this assignment, with all of my assignments and other assignments in your courses this semester. Uh, remember to discuss. If anything, do let me know any qualms that you might have in the future in light of completing this assignment. Okay, guys, so I'm going to stop here. So uh, I'll meet you again in a different recording uh, for a different assignment. All right. Take care. Assalamualaikum.